With the Cold War as it was, the Sputnik was a serious threat to national security, with fear of a nuclear strike coming from the Soviets using a rocket similar to the one that put Sputnik into orbit. This fear led to the space race between the United States and Soviet Union. Both countries were trying to become the most powerful force in space exploration. Therefore, many satellites were launched in the following time frame. The Soviets put the first man in space, so to end the reign of Soviet superiority over America, the world was challenged with a race to the moon. So, when the United States won the space race, people soon began to forget about Sputnik. But today, the Sputnik remains a launch pad for all modern space exploration. Communication satellites to the International Space Station likely wouldn't be where they are today if it weren't for Sputnik. The United States had recently launched two nuclear bombs on Hiro Hiroshima and Nagasaki to end World War II, so this was a very dangerous time for both the United States and Soviet Union. Being the main superpowers in the world, both countries had easy access to large bombs. It would be too dangerous to launch bomber aircraft because it could easily be shot down, and missiles don't require someone inside them to aim them. So missiles were the focus of long-range warfare, but missiles at the time didn't go very far or have a large payload. So an intercontinental ballistic missile would have to be developed to have a very good chance on destroying a large target. Since a missile of the size would only need to go halfway around the world, anything that could get into orbit could potentially make it to another body of land carrying a larger payload. Since America had the strongest military in the world, they assumed that they could get away with not really needing to try to develop such missiles. So, they were, more, they were more worried about stopping missiles than launching them. Both the U.S. and the Soviet Union did all of their missile study in private, out of the view of public or press. This caused the American side to have less money for their missile programs, because nobody was donating directly to it. Only tax dollars would be funding the programs. Another issue is that America was left with none of their allies helping them. NATO had been formed, but said nothing about a simple technology race, only direct threats. So America was really unprepared for anything that later happened. On October 4th, 1957, the Soviet satellite Sputnik was launched into orbit. Weighing 184 pounds and about the size of a beach ball, this was a successful launch where the United States had failed to launch multiple smaller satellites. The weight of Sputnik is what scared America the most. This is because they feared that a rocket similar to Sputnik's could be topped with a nuclear warhead and aimed at the United States. Sputnik made a beeping noise every three tenths of a second, sounding much like a telegraph. Although many tried to decode the signal, all failed leaving this as just proof it was there or a code much too hard to crack. When the second Sputnik was launched, it contained actual animal life. The dog, Lockheed, was sent to test whether or not living things could survive the zero gravity of space. Lockheed didn't survive the whole journey, and many animal rights activists complained around the world. To America, this was only even more terrifying than ever because this Sputnik weighed much more than the first. The whole country feared that serious trouble could occur if America didn't get their act together. So, the United States Vanguard program was watched over carefully until it finally had a successful launch into orbit, transmitting data back to Earth. Both countries pumped out more satellites until the Soviets launched a man into full orbit around the Earth. Weighing heavier than ever and challenging America to master yet another ab orbital ability, this launch was by far the most dangerous. Since the Cold War was the United States and Soviet Union stressing over the other side bombing them, the proof of Soviet superiority in rockets and space technology frightened the U.S. into investing every spare penny into putting things in space. 
The U.S. focused on putting a man into suborbital flights, meaning they didn't go completely around the Earth, only made an arc landing a distance away. Even though the U.S. was still trying to catch up to the Soviet Union, the Soviets continued ahead of the states. Eventually, the Gemini missions were able to do most of these, most of the actions the Soviets could already do, such as full orbits, multiple passengers, and extravehicular activities, also known as spacewalks. But the states were still behind, and the Soviet Union had won all previous races, so a challenge was made for the moon. The United States Apollo program formed, and the United States and Soviet Union were sending probes to the moon to examine the soil, gravity, and the terrain before risking a man's life on the body. There was a failure of Apollo 1 on the launch pad, but all others were successful tests until finally Apollo 11's eagle landed on the moon. The United States superiority over the so Soviet Union that was lost with Sputnik was then regained by completing the ultimate task. The last Apollo mission was redesigned to test an alliance with the Soviets in space and was the beginning of the International Space Station. Today, the Sputnik is a very important catalyst for all modern space exploration. Man may not yet have even been to the moon if the Soviet Union didn't win the satellite and man in orbit challenge. Now, the Sputnik has caused peaceful exploration, encounter, and exchange around Earth. Sputnik led to many Americans having a deep fear of being killed by the Soviet Union. Many tax dollars were spent on improving the United States' control in space. Even today, the Sputnik's push is helping inspire us to go into space to explore. Beginning all of space exploration and challenging the United States, the Sputnik is very important. Originally, it was feared because the Cold War was all about making sure that you are better than your enemy in every way possible, including space. If, since it was feared so much, the U.S. was forced to prove that they could win by doing something even better than they had already lost to. With the Apollo program, Americans yelled in joy while Soviets weren't even allowed to see the televised landings. Proving that, they entirely redeemed the U proving that they entirely redeemed the U.S. for all past failures. So really, the Sputnik was a good thing in the end.